Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of High Rise by J.G. Ballard. So, I actually picked this up because my other half was given a copy of this for her birthday by her housemate, Greg. So shout out to Greg, because basically it's Greg's, Greg's the reason I'm reading this now. And uh, I stopped over once and I just picked it up, and I've obviously I've heard of Ballard. Uh, I hadn't actually heard of this novel though and didn't know too much about him or his work. And I picked this up while she was in the shower or something and I read the introduction by Ned Bowman and it sounded so fascinating, I just knew I had to pick it up and read it. So I'm gonna read you the blurb and then I'm gonna go through and check out some of my tabs. Within the concealing walls of an elegant 40-story tower block, the affluent tenants are hell-bent on an orgy of destruction. Cocktail parties degenerate into marauding attacks on enemy floors, and the once luxurious amenities become an arena for riots and technological mayhem. In this visionary tale of urban disillusionment, society slips into a violent reverse as the isolated inhabitants of the high-rise, driven by primal urges, recreate a dystopian world ruled by the laws of the jungle. So there are a lot of really interesting ideas to this. Uh, one of these is, uh, a lot of these are things I've been talking about with Noemi as well, which is why she really needs to read it, but one of them being this idea of up being better. So, you know, in the cities you have the penthouse suite is at the top of the tower blocks and the same here, they, you know, the, more, the richer people live at the top. But even with things like heaven and hell, it's considered heaven is up, hell is down, that sort of thing, you know? So um, even like upper class, the fact that we say upper and lower, yeah, it, it all kind of comes back to this idea of height. And it's kind of cool how that's shown in this. Um, I also saw a minor spoiler for this uh, in that somebody had posted something about like, you know, or everyone kind of talks about the bit with a dog. And I read basically a dog dies. Um, which happens, it's not as bad as I was expecting it to be actually, but it kind of gets referenced anyway right at the beginning. So this is the opening line of the novel. Later, as he sat on his balcony eating the dog, Dr. Robert Lang reflected on the unusual events that had taken place within this huge apartment building during the previous three months. And we kind of get to see how we get from living in an apartment to eating a dog, you know? I thought this was interesting as well because this is also a conversation we have a lot here on BookTube, I think, in terms of cancel culture. This low-level bickering surprised Lang, but after his arrival at the apartment building, he soon recognised the extraordinary number of thinly veiled antagonisms around him. The high-rise had a second life of its own. The talk at Alice's party moved on two levels. Never far below the froth of professional gossip was a hard mantle of personal rivalry. At times he felt that they were all waiting for someone to make a serious mistake. And that's exactly what it feels like being on social media. Everyone is waiting to catch everybody else out, you know? And we have that repeated here as well a little bit later. So this is quite clearly an important idea to Ballard, who was writing this in uh, 1975, I think it came out. A new social type was being created by the apartment building, a cool, unemotional personality impervious to the psychological pre pressures of high-rise life, with minimal needs for privacy, who thrived like an advanced species of machine in the neutral atmosphere. This was the sort of resident who was content to do nothing but sit in his overpriced apartment, watch television with the sound turned down, and wait for his neighbours to make a mistake. So I can see why on the back this was called, like, a prophetic novel, you know? I think this is interesting again, this kind of covers that idea of higher up being better, you know? As his sons wandered sleepily into the room, Helen remarked, perhaps we could move to a higher floor. Shaving his chin, Wilder pondered this last comment of his wife's. The frail plea had a particular significance, as if some long-standing ambition had been tapped inside his head. Helen, of course, was thinking in terms of social advancement, of moving in effect to a better neighbourhood, away from this lower class suburb to those smarter residential districts, somewhere between the 15th and 30th floors, where the corridors were clean and the children would not have to play in the streets, where tolerance and sophistication civilised the air. I want to read this, this is quite a long little excerpt here, but I think this will give you uh, a great example of some of the stuff that's talked about here and why I think it's still pretty relevant today, you know? The psychology of high-rise life had been exposed with damning results. The absence of humour, for example, had always struck Wilder as the single most significant feature. All research by investigators confirmed that the tenants of high-rises made no jokes about them. In a strict sense, life there was eventless. On the basis of his own experience, Wilder was convinced that the high-rise apartment was an insufficiently flexible shell to provide the kind of home which encouraged activities, as distinct from somewhere to eat and sleep. Living in high-rises required a special type of behaviour, one that was acquiescent, restrained, even perhaps slightly mad. A psychotic would have a ball here, Wilder reflected. Vandalism had plagued these slab and tower blocks since their inception. Every torn out piece of telephone equipment, every handle wrenched off a fire safety door, every kicked in electricity meter represented a stand against decerebration. 
What angered Wilder most of all about life in the apartment building was the way in which an apparently homogenous collection of high income professional people had split into three distinct and hostile camps. The old social subdivisions, based on power, capital and self-interest, had, re had reasserted themselves here as anywhere else. In effect, the high-rise had already divided itself into the three classical social groups, its lower, middle and upper classes. The tenth floor shopping mall formed a clear boundary between the lower nine floors, with their proletariat of film technicians, air hostesses and the like, and the middle section of the high-rise, which extended from the tenth floor to the swimming pool and restaurant deck on the 35th. The central two-thirds of the apartment building formed its middle class, made up of self-centred but basically docile members of the professions, the doctors and lawyers, accountants and tax specialists who worked not for themselves, but for medical institutes and large corporations. Puritan and self-disciplined, they had all the cohesion of those eager to sell for second best. Above them, on the top five floors of the high-rise, was its upper class, the discreet oligarchy of minor tycoons and entrepreneurs, television actresses and careerist academics, with their high-speed elevators and superior services, their carpeted staircases. It was they who set the pace of the building. It was their complaints which were acted upon first, and it was they who subtly dominated life within the high-rise, deciding when the children could use the swimming pools and roof garden, the menus in the restaurant and the high charges that kept out almost everyone but themselves. Above all, it was their subtle patronage that kept the middle ranks in line, this constantly dangling carrot of friendship and approval. Sounds familiar! And then basically, uh, a dog dies, and then a person dies, and then we sort of see all hell break loose, and after that I don't want to share too much because I don't want to share spoilers about what, what actually happens. It's kind of a bit, almost, yeah, it goes a bit post-apocalyptic, a bit dystopian, and it's obviously all set in this tower block as well. Um, but I thought this was really interesting too, because this refers to the idea like, if someone falls down in the street and there's only one other person around, then that person tends to help them up. But if someone falls in the street and 10 people are there, everyone kind of looks at each other and expects the other person to help, you know? This growing defiance of reality no longer surprised Wilder. The decision that the chaos within the high rise was a matter for the residents themselves explained the mystery of the dead jeweler. At least a thousand people must have seen the body. Wilder remembered stepping onto the balcony and being startled, not by the sight of the dead man, but by the huge audience reaching up to the sky. Had anyone notified the police? He had taken it for granted, but now he was less sure. Wilder found it hard to believe that this sophisticated and self-important man would commit suicide. Yet no one was in the least concerned, accepting the possibility of murder in the same way that the swimmers in the pool accepted the wine bottles and beer cans rolling around the tiled floor under their feet. So yeah, that's about all I want to share about High Rise by J.G. Ballard. Again, I really enjoyed it actually. It wasn't quite what I was expecting and I was kind of expecting it might have been a 5 star. But for me it was maybe a 4, 4.25 out of 5, but definitely a contender for one of my top books of the quarter. It was recently, I say recently, within like the last 5 years or so I think, turned into a movie, so I might watch that. And yeah, for, based on this I definitely want to read some more Ballard as well. I think... Uh, he had some really interesting ideas in this that are, again, as I say, they're just as relevant now as they were when he wrote this. So there we have it, that's what I thought of High Rise by J.G. Ballard. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought if you read this book, and if so, whether you liked it or not. Did that make sense? We'll keep rolling anyway. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye